Hello everyone and welcome back to Java. Thank you for joining me. This is the Best Mac Tutorials and this is tutorial number 12. Uh, so, uh, two orders of business real quick. The first one is, uh, sorry I haven't been posting. Oh, if you don't want to hear this and you just want to skip right to the tutorial, go to three minutes in. Uh, so one is, sorry I haven't been posting the past like two weeks. I was, last week and I was busy playing Borderlands 2 and doing a bunch of homework, I think. And this weekend I was doing the Seesaw Challenge, which is really fun. It's a hacking gob edition put on by poly.edu. And uh, it's really cool. I, I'd suggest uh, looking into it and giving it a try if you're interested uh, next year. And uh, my team scored like around 3,000 or something-ish uh, out of 8,500. But it was still a lot of fun. Learned a lot. And it was my first year doing it. Actually, the whole team's first year doing it, I think. So it's pretty cool. Uh, very interesting. But anyway, that's where I was this weekend. So uh, the second housekeeping thing is uh, pretty soon I'm going to be opening up an open source uh, website for open source software that I make, hence the name open source website. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to call it or the, the domain or anything like that, but um, it'll be just a real simple website where I'm just going to post open source projects that I'm working on, post updates, post um, uh, latest builds, that type of stuff. Uh, may at some point go in and offer uh, giveaway like beta accounts on the YouTube site or on my YouTube channel, yeah, on the YouTube sites, um, and that'll be, that'll give access to, like, um, more alpha type products, or things that are really in beta, are buggy, that kind of stuff, and, um, or maybe I'll just post it all public, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, uh, but the first thing to go up is going to be a, um, port scanning type application, there is, of course, a bit of legality issue with posting, anything that could be used for malicious purposes. Uh, so I'm just going to have like an EOLA that says you cannot use this for any malicious purposes, only for penetration testing on systems that you own or have full authorization to test, or for educational purposes, for looking at the source code, seeing how that kind of stuff works. Uh, and so that'd be the end of that legal gray area. Although if people still have trouble, problems with that being up, I'll probably just go in and take it down and start afresh with new projects. But anyhow, that's where that's headed. I don't know the domain, like I said, yet or anything like that. I'll get you more information as that develops. Look for it in the next two to three weeks, probably. I'll be updating. I'll be uh, at the beginning of each job tutorial from now to then. I'll probably be just giving a quick update on what's going on with that. Uh, it's going to be fun. What it's going to be is it's going to be this simple little website with like a, uh, you know, different web pages, each with uh, the current with the product and latest updates and stuff like that. It'll probably be almost all HTML based. I might do a little bit of PHP. I don't know. Uh, might learn PHP to do that, and um, uh, it would basically be have a download of the jar file and of the source code, and it'd probably have AdSense ads to fund the domain and just be a, you know, little trifle of income that uh, kind of like I have on the YouTube channel with the videos. So anyway, thank you for listening to that, or if you didn't, oh well, thank you anyway for joining me. Uh, let's get on to the actual programming section of this thing today, and um, so last we left off, if you haven't watched tutorial 11, go and watch that, because else this probably doesn't make much sense unless you already know Java GUIs, in which case you're probably not watching this tutorial. But, who am I to judge? But anyway, if you don't know this, just go back and watch tutorial 11, I'll explain it all. If you don't understand Java at all, go back to tutorial 1, and from there you can just get a really nice, smooth intro into Java, and arrive here. So. Uh, if I run this real quick, uh, this is what I get. I get this little program with three buttons, and uh, here is my folder with uh, my project folder for this. So if I click Make File, I get this file called text.txt. Inside it says the Abyss Mac Tutorials. If I click Delete File, interestingly enough, it deletes the file. And if I click Close Program, the program closes. Uh, same as uh, pressing the X. Also, if you press this, it gets really big, and it's like, wow, that's impressive. Um, what? <laughs> so anyway, today we're going to be adding images, uh, image icons to our little buttons. And so the way the Java website, uh, oracles, uh, Java docs, whatever, tutorial things, they suggest doing, uh, that's where I learned GUI elements, they suggest doing, uh, from what I know of them anyway, they suggest doing, let me get finish my thought before I go off on a weird tangent, they suggest doing, what was that? Anyway, they suggest doing a, uh, a method that uh, returns a image icon, and it uses a java.net.url, I think. Yeah, java.net.url object, um, uh, which is more versatile. However, for our purposes, uh, the files are going to be contained locally in our project folder, and we're not worrying at this point about exports to jar files. Uh, if we were, then we would put more time into this. However, we're not, so I'm just going to do it this way. And then um, maybe in the future, if we ever get to the point where we're exporting this to a jar file, 
I'll go back and make quick amends to make it work for that with actually using the image URL. But for now, uh, we're not going to actually make a method for that. We're just going to do it all inside of our main class method. Uh, no method specific for it anyway, uh, because we're going to be doing a simplified version of that. So uh, we're going to need three image icons. And if we look over here, we have our three icons here, delete, exit, and save.ping. And uh, these two are ones that I reused from my PP coin or P squared coin um, GUI application that I think I may have showed you last time. If not, oh well. And this exit one is one that I just pulled off randomly from the internet. They're all 40 by 40 pixels, as you can see here. Yep, as you can see here. And uh, that's a good size generally for buttons. You can have any size you want, but um, that's generally a, a, an appropriate size because the buttons do scale to fit the size of the image. So if you, you know you have a 500 by 500, your button's going to be about 600 by 500, 550 maybe even 600. So yeah, you're going to have a problem. It's not going to look very pretty. So anyway, let's make our image icons and then we'll amend the button construction to uh, support that. And uh, this tutorial is going to be pretty short today. So, yay, I guess. Um, don't fry your brains. So uh, if we create our image icon, and let's call this one uh, make equals new image icon uh, icon icon and then we'll give it a string uh, it's called what save.ping I think and so let's run this real quick and see if anything happens of course it doesn't show the file but I'm checking for errors we didn't get any errors so now we're going to add this to our constructor make and just like that we have an icon on our button pretty easy actually uh, for delete file I'm just gonna create all my image icons up here delete equals new image icon delete dot ping and image icon make delete close equals new image icon close dot ping. I think that's the names. If it's not, we'll go back and check and fix it. Uh, uh, delete and then down here it'll be. Oh whoa 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 no. Um, <laughs> close. There we go. And we'll run this. And as you can see. We have two buttons, and this third one didn't come through. So let's check why. I called it exit.ping, not close.ping. Exit. I knew I would screw one of those up. I just knew it. So now if we run it, as you can see, uh, we have make, delete, and close program. Everything still works the same. Make file. Make file. Makes the file. Delete file, deletes the file. If it's not there, it does nothing, and close program, of course, close the program, just like this nice little pretty X at the top. So that's that's that, and that is that. And um, so that's how you put the image icons in. And then I think that's it for this tutorial, actually. That was a really quick one, and I was actually expecting that to take a little bit longer. Uh, an explanation real quick as far as what an image icon is, though. Image icon, as they'll tell you, is serialized objects of this class. Well, oh, that's not, that's a warning. Oh, they don't even say what it is, but well, basically an image icon is, you can imagine it like an image, and we haven't done image objects either, but you can imagine it like basically just imagine the general concept of an image, except that it's optimized to be an icon, to be used as an icon. So it's the kind of thing a button is going to use, uh, that a button's going to be looking for to use, because uh, it is an icon, it is uh, generally smaller resolutions, it's generally uh, less... Hmm, smaller and less detailed, uh, although that wouldn't really matter, that's kind of the concept behind it, uh, as far as what it is, and so it loads it differently, it uh, kind of treats it differently in memory, I think, and so that's why we're using image icons. Also, I think the J button requires an image icon. So, but yeah, thank you for joining us. The source code will be available in the description. Again, very short tutorial. Uh, next tutorial, we'll be going over, that one will be probably really long, like 30 minutes or so. That'll be over uh, how to make tables, populate them with stuff. Uh, and then after that, we'll probably be going into uh, user input and getting user input um, through like uh, a key listener, which kind of sounds like a key logger and it is almost a key logger. Uh, but of course, it only works when the program has focus. So that'd be useful for like, uh, you know, shortcut commands with one key, like, you know, C for copy, that kind of stuff. And so we'll be going into that and we'll be incorporating that into our uh, feature of putting up tables. So thank you for joining me and I will see you next time.